welcome to the dev all i am roman and this is the first episode in this channel and this is also the first episode of an f sharp introductory series the goal of this series is to give you a nice and gentle introduction into the f sharp programming language i prepared 10 episodes and we start very simple and very slowly with values, value bindings and the REPL. We go on with functions, uh, list functions. We will talk about discriminated unions, about records, about currying and in the end about the option type. In order to be able to do this, we are going to talk about a domain that hopefully everybody can relate to. The reason for this is that, in my opinion, it's much easier to learn something and much more effective to learn something if we can actually relate to the domain. That if we are not just talking about add or modulo functions or the Fibonacci um, calculations or whatever, whatever, whatever. So I was thinking of a domain and this domain is an ice cream truck. So I hope everybody loves ice cream. I do. And in our series, we are following a person named Clara. And she has the uh, dream of, of building her own business and creating her own ice cream truck. And this ice cream truck is called Clara's Parlor. You will find all the infos about the episodes down there in the description. You will also find my Twitter handle there if you want to, to, to contact me in any way. Um, I will put a gist of all the files we are going to write together up on GitHub. And the link is also given down there. And I would be really happy if I get any feedback or any critique or anything whatsoever. Because this is the first time I, I'm doing any kind of video tutorial. I have no clue about video editing, about video capturing, about video whatsoever. So I am also in the process of learning all this. And this learning manifests itself, for example, in the fact that I had to re-record this first episode because the sound was just too horrible and the lightning or the lights were just too horrible and I, I tried to improve it. The next couple of episodes are a bit different um, and from episode 8 on everything will look like this um, here now. So without further ado it would be really great if you would follow me along. We have a lot to do so los geht's. All right, let's start. In this video series, I'm going to use the Visual Studio Code Editor with the awesome Ionite plugin. Um, the mode I, which we'll be operating in will be that I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I will write something down and then I will send what I was writing down to the REPL. The REPL is a really nice feature that F Sharp has. It, it is an abbreviation for Read Evaluation Print Loop. So it's actually able to, to, we are actually able to send something to the REPL. So the REPL reads our input, it evaluates this and prints the result um, back to us. This is really nice because we don't need to compile a lot of stuff. We don't need to create binaries or command line um, programs. We can just run um, everything we put into the editor um, directly. So let's do this. We said, um, the, the, the name of the ice cream truck is Clara's Parlor. Clara's Parlor. Here. This is a string. And we can send this directly to the REPL with Alt Enter here. And we see that if Sharp is doing something. And then we see that we have a value, um, which is of type string. And the value is Clara's Parlor. As you see here, F Sharp inferred that we have a string here, that this is not a number or something different. In F Sharp in general, most of the stuff, uh, most of the types of our identifiers, names, values, functions can be inferred by the language. We don't need to annotate all of our stuff, but we can actually do this. So here we have, for example, a string and it might be that Clara wants to take 90 cents for one of her ice creams. So we could say 0.9, which is here a float. And Clara could also use, say, 
that she wants to sell two different kind of flavors for her ice creams and the first one is strawberry and the second one is vanilla. These are the two flavors we are going to work um, with during this series. Okay, but this is not very useful now. I mean, we can evaluate those again and we see that there are strings. Awesome. But we can't really do anything with, with those values. They're just standing there, but we can't really get a hold of them and work with them somewhere different. And this is where identifiers or names come into play. So in order to be able to, to introduce something that we can get a hold of later on, we use the let keyword to, to introduce a new identifier and we call this ice cream shop equals Clara's parlor. So we evaluate this and we see here that the value here now has the name ice cream shop and it's a string and the value is Clara's parlor. If you're coming from different programming languages like C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PHP, pretty much every non-functional programming language, you'd say, all right, cool, we have defined a variable here. And I'd say this is not true. Because in F Sharp, everything by default is immutable. Immutable means it cannot be changed afterwards. So we haven't defined a variable here. What we have actually defined is a constant. We can't change the value later on. So we can't just say, for example, here ice um, cream shop equals romance parlor. This is not possible. Um, there is no error here, but the reason is something different. The reason when I, when I evaluate this, you see that this is actually false. So the normal, the one equal sign is not an operator that assigns a value to a name or reassigns a value to a name. But if we use it in, in, in other contracts, then with the let keyword, it's just the normal comparison operator, which returns true or false. And because ice cream shop is Clara's parlor, it does not equal Roman's parlor. So we get back false. So what we are actually doing here is we introduce an identifier or a name and we bind a value to a name. So in F sharp, we do not assign variables, we do value bindings. So for example, down here, we could also say ice cream one equals strawberry, let ice cream two equals vanilla and let price equals 0.9. All uh, right, we can evaluate all those again and we see that the ice cream shop, the ice cream one and two are strings with a specific value and the price is a float. What you see up here is not a real feature now of F sharp. So over the let, it's this where it's, it's up here where we see float, string, string. And what this is, this is the feature of the Visual Studio Code editor with Ionite. These are called line lenses and um, these are written above our, our identifiers and it tells us the type of the identifier without actually uh, annotating them. We could annotate actually the type by saying this is a string. This wouldn't change anything if you evaluate this again. We see here that the ice cream shop stays a string um, and we just told F sharp that this is a string, but it was actually smart enough to know it before. Now you might say, but Roman, how shitty is this shitty, shitty language? If we can't really reassign any values, if we only have constants, how the hell are we supposed to work with this language? It can't be done. And I will tell you, it can be done. We need to think a bit differently in those languages, in those function functionally, statically typed languages, but it's possible and I'd argue that, that the code of these kinds of, of um, programs, it's much more readable and much more easy to reason about. But sometimes we might need mutable values, only sometimes, not very often. I'd say in 99% of the cases we need, uh, we don't need mutable values at all. But sometimes for some specific um, performance uh, cases, it might be necessary. So in this case, 
F sharp gives us actually the possibility to define an identifier that can be changed later on. So that is, it is mutable. And in this case, we need to introduce the ugly, ugly mutable keyword and say price two, for example, equals uh, 1.0. And we send this to the REPL here and see that this is a mutable name or a mutable identifier. And if we want to reassign the value now, we have to use a backwards arrow and say um, the price. Um, so we, we push a new value in the, into this price. You, you can think of it like this and say, for example, 4.0. Oh, it's not working because we're using the price too. And if we evaluate this, we see down here that now the price has the actual value um, of 4.0. In this case, we can't really do this. Here, we can't say price backwards arrow 4.0. This is not possible because price is immutable. But this was the last time that we are going to talk about mutable values in this whole series because as I said, you don't really need them to use your everyday um, programming stuff in F sharp. So let's kill all this. Don't think about it again. Let's not talk about it again and only talk about normal value bindings. Great. So we are done for the first episode. We have talked about values, value bindings and the REPL and I gave you a small introduction. I think that this is enough for the first episode. In the next episode, we are going to talk about the heart of functional programming languages, which is functions, of course. So we want to help Clara to actually calculate how much money she would get if she sells uh, an ice cream or two ice creams or three ice creams for a specific price. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Feel free to contact me to leave any comments. I really hope to see you there and that you enjoyed the first episode. Bye-bye.